You know, there are many interesting and valid lessons of history to be learned from World War II, politically, militarily, and for me personally, most interestingly, technologically. However, invariably, people have almost no idea about any of this will just use comparing someone to Hitler as an insult, as a sort of placeholder for evil, leading to Godwin's law that eventually anyone in an online argument will eventually compare the other person to Hitler. But here is probably the quickest and best example of Godwin's law on the internet. Take it away, Eric. You know, people say evolution is not a bad philosophy, but at the same time, it was Hitler's religion during the Third Reich in Germany. Hi, my name is Eric. Now that, my friends, is impressive. You've not even got to your name before you got to Godwin's Law. You've not even got eight seconds into the video before you're saying that Hitler's religion was evolution. There's just a few tiny problems with that, Eric. Firstly, the country from which the Nazis grew was, by almost any definition, a Christian country. So, for instance, when the civil servants pledged their allegiance to Hitler, this is how they did it. This was the oath of the civil servants. I swear I will be faithful and obedient to the leader of the German Empire and people, Adolf Hitler, to observe the law and to conscientiously fulfill my duties, so help me evolution. Oh, that's odd. They don't say, so help me evolution, they say, so help me God. Well, maybe it's just a, a, a typo or something, a, a poor translation or something like that. Let's see what someone who actually fought against the Germans in one of the most bloody and desperate battles in human history. That would be the Battle of Stalingrad. Had to say about the Germans. We took whatever we could get and we never felt bad about it. After all, the Germans had the words God with us engraved on their belt buckles. They were religious people. Huh. God with us on their belt buckles, eh? Even more bizarre. Yeah, let's take a look at the, the SS, the worst of the worst, the guys who ran the death camps and so forth. Surely they didn't swear by God. They, they must have been the ones who swore by evolution. Right? Right, Eric? So the SS oath came in three parts, and the first question was, what is your oath? And the answer was, I vow to you, Adolf Hitler, as Führer and Chancellor of the German Reich, loyalty and bravery. I vow to you and to the leaders that you set for me absolute allegiance until death, so help me God. Then part two, so you believe in a God, to which the answer was, yes, I believe in a Lord God. And then the third part of the pledge, what do you think about a man who does not believe in a god? And then the answer was, I think he is arrogant, megalomaniacal, and stupid. He is not eligible for us. And that was the vow of the SS, Eric. You know, people say evolution is not a bad philosophy. But at the same time, it was Hitler's religion during the Third Reich in Germany. Hey, you know, Eric, I'm really not quite so sure I'm seeing that Hitler's religion here was evolution. But let's be real. It should come as a surprise to no one that Christians can slaughter innocent people and treat them like slaves, because that's exactly what Moses does in the Bible, specifically as commanded by um, uh, God. So there's this big battle, and then after the battle, Moses comes and asks them, have you allowed all of the women to live? And then he goes on to say, now kill all of the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. And then later, he goes on into dividing the spoils. And the Lord said unto Moses, you and Eliza, the priest, and the family heads of the community are to count all of the people and animals that were captured. Divide the spoils equally between the soldiers who took part in the battle and the rest of the community. From the soldiers who fought in the battle, set apart as a, as a, as a tribute to the Lord, one out of every 500, whether they be people, cattle, donkeys, or sheep. Take this tribute from their half share and give it to Eliza, the priest, as the Lord's part. 
Now, at this point, you might be saying, well, the, you know, you've got the Lord and, and Moses and Elijah. What's the relationship between them? Well, Moses is the guy who talks to God, and Elijah just happens to be his second son. I'm sure it's all just pure coincidence that the Lord wants all of this stuff to be given to Moses' kids. And what was the plunder of all of this, I hear you ask? Well, you'll be happy to know that the Lord's tribute was 675 sheep, 72 cattle, 61 donkeys, and 32 virgins. And Moses gave the tribute to Eliza. That's the Lord's part. Yeah, it's just what you would want if you had created the entire universe, is to have some battle fought among desert savages in some nowhere hick part of the world on one planet out of billions, going around one star out of billions, in one galaxy out of billions. And what did the god who supposedly created all of this get out of it? 61 donkeys and 32 virgins. Freaking A. Yeah, shock and horror. The people whose holy book tells them to kill witches and stone adulterers can commit war crimes. From just killing captives who just happen not to be virgin women to hell. Just killing everyone. And that's just how they behave in their holy book. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. And then the Lord goes on, Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Yes, of course, people who can rationalise away crap like that in their holy book can run death camps. And honestly, Eric, I'm just really not seeing that there's any high moral ground for Christianity here whatsoever. You know, people say evolution is not a bad philosophy, but at the same time, it was Hitler's religion during the Third Reich in Germany. However, for those who want to learn probably the most important lesson about World War II, I give you this. But maybe the best insight you can get into this is that generals captured by the British were housed in a luxury estate and treated well. Naturally, they talked to each other, and the British Secret Service clandestinely recorded it all. From this, you get a wart and all view of the workings of the Wehrmacht. You see it all, not as they wanted you to see it, but like it was. When I am asked to testify, whatever I say, I intend to twist it in such a way that the officer call is cleared off everything. I'm absolutely determined. And then the captain says to the lieutenant, Damn, I can't stand seeing these farmyard faces anymore. Takes out his revolver and shoots the farmer who he had personally invited over and blows him across the table. Now it's a ten-year-old boy's turn. The captain says, take him outside and shoot him. He was killed by a shot to the neck. I had them court-martialed. The captain just said, we didn't shoot any human beings. I asked for the death penalty for both of them, a public execution shot by their own company. They were just sent to some punishment battalion. We had other things to worry about. What they did back there didn't matter to us. We just wanted to get out of it, alive. In Serbia I was ordered to have 100 people shot for every dead German. And 50 people for every wounded German. But I never carried out the order. I had to do my duty. I couldn't say that seems wrong to me. I can't step out of line. You just can't. That's just what the senior Wehrmacht officers failed to say with one voice. We refuse to take part in these atrocities. They are a disgrace to the name of Germany. Sure, some of the lads may have shot people who put up their hands to surrender. But that was just the same on the other side. The oath of allegiance applies as long as the Führer lives. Do you consider the Führer mentally stable? You cannot allow a subordinate to determine whether his superior is mentally intact or not. Some of our soldiers, there are some in every unit, complete bastards, held nothing sacred. We had some. Stauffenberg, now he always had What a man. A noble, decent human being. A man with principles. The model of a decent, intelligent general staff officer. 
A man with the welfare of his troops at heart. Most of the army knew about the 20th of July, you know? No, no. It was discussed incredibly often. No, I don't believe that. They even consulted the commanders of the individual armies beforehand. What was, at its core, a professional army of a modern, educated, Western, Christian, first world country was ordered to do immoral things by a regime that they had helped, sometimes enthusiastically, to create. And how people, very little different from you or I, dealt with that situation. Sure, they bear their measure of blame for Hitler getting as far as he did. But bear in mind that Hitler did not run on a campaign of mechanized extermination of the Jews and war with Russia, but on patriotic messages of restoring Germany's former status. And by the time they were locked in a war of annihilation with Russia, the die was cast. I believed her. I, I helped her. I did not see what she was. Mr. Worf, villains who twirl their moustaches are easy to spot. Those who clothe themselves in good deeds are well camouflaged. But she, or someone like her, will always be with us, waiting for the right climate in which to flourish. Spreading fear in the name of righteousness. Vigilance, Mr. Worf. That is the price we have to continually pay. <laughs> 